All right, friends, we got a wild day today. Lots of action, lots of emotions, lots of losses, lots of gains to be had, a lot of volatility out there. So I'm going to do my best to stay on topic because there's a lot I want to talk about and I don't want to be jumping all over the place, confusing everybody. So we have a big pullback today, but we have opportunity with this pullback. The first thing that I want to establish is nothing has fundamentally changed, right? So that's what the mindset we need to have here is that there's no big bad news you know, if there's a headline, ETH, Ethereum doesn't work, that'd be something different and longs would be bailing and the scenario would be different. But as of right now, nothing is going on fundamentally besides further profit taking and consolidation. There's a lot of games being played in the space and I can only speak to Ethereum because I'm watching the order book and I'm watching the trade history and I'm watching patterns and I'm seeing things that tell me that manipulation is going on. Now, before I get into that, want to just say that it's a pet peeve of mine. I come from the, the penny stock world originally, and it's a pet peeve of mine that people constantly are blaming manipulation and shorts when they're in losing trades and it's going against them. It, it really just bugs me. It's just this, this common boogeyman that everybody wants to point to. Oh, I'm losing money because of a manipulation and the shorts are all over this or whatever it is. There is manip manipulation out there, but if you go on the penny stock, you know, message boards, the amount of manipulation that they talk about is pretty absurd, but there's manipulation in this space and it's unregulated. This is an unregulated space. You have to keep in mind that right now in this downtrend, it is being completely controlled and owned by big money, whether it's banks or Wall Street or whatever. I don't know who it is, but whoever it is has a lot of trading experience and they are utilizing a logarithms for trading and bots. We can call them whatever that you want. Same thing. And they are really taking control here. They have much more control on this downside movement than on the way to the upside, in my opinion. But they're making a killing and they are making a ton of money off of people's emotions and they are capitalizing. This is what they do for a living. They've been doing it for decades. And if you're going to give them a market that is this volatile with this much money flowing in and out and say, here you go, this is unregulated. They are going to take completely full advantage of that. And what I mean by unregulated is there is nobody to keep tabs on them. They can manipulate things and they can do things that are illegal to do with stocks. And what I mean by that is here's an example story time back in 2012, maybe within a year or two around there, trading the USMJ sector in penny stocks and there was a popular iHub user, Hot Stock Ace, and he was part of Money Runners. It was a group where they would buy in and they would post their pick and then everybody else would buy and they would sell their shares into all those unsuspecting people and people would make money because it would run, but then there would be people left holding the bag. Well, he was arrested. I remember seeing his mugshot. He was maybe 24 at the time. They were arrested because they were manipulating things. They were in a hemp penny stock, H-E-M-P was the ticker. And they were just trading it back and forth with themselves in two accounts, just buying and selling and creating artificial volume. So people would look at that and say, oh, wow, there's a lot of volume going on. Look at all that volume on the daily time frame. When in reality, they were, they were trading millions of shares back and forth to each other and just paying commissions and that's it. So that's illegal. They were arrested. The SEC really has, you know, the amount of what the SEC can regulate compared to the corruption that's going on in the stock market is probably, you know, one in a thousand. It's really the tip of the iceberg and, and doesn't do anything. So I was really surprised that this happened. Maybe they wanted to make an example. But either way, there is some sort of regular regulatory agency to prevent that from happening. Here in cryptocurrencies, I could be trading a million ETH back and forth with the same account, doing whatever I want, and there is nobody that can do anything to slap me on the wrist or anything like that. So that is going on. There are people, these big bankers or Wall Street or whoever it is, they've got their bots playing these games. I was watching today on Ethereum as there was a 40 ETH bot that was buying every 31 seconds on the dot and it was consistent and it was for hours and hours. So if you add that up, that's 2,300 ETH an hour and I saw it for at least four hours. So that's you know millions of dollars, but at the same time, First, I recognized that and I'm saying, okay, this is some bullish action. Somebody's loading up. And then I started to paying more attention because the price wasn't going up. And I'm saying to myself, okay, why is the price going down if we're seeing this bot buying? And then I noticed that there was a selling bot. There was a 50 sell bot completely contradicting that action. So every time 40 was bought, 50 was sold. And that's a 25% difference. And of course, over a long period of time, that's going to significantly add up. And it, it, it really drove the price to the downside slowly and surely a slow bleed and i'll point out on the chart here where it was most not noticeable but then we saw the all-out dump in response to that and then we saw 
Bulls loading and a bit of a short squeeze, and now the momentum is shifting. So let's get into it. We'll start with the daily time frame, then we'll zoom in. So here on Ethereum, we made a key break of support. We had our the first bear break we had was this support line up here. We were watching this descending triangle pattern. We saw a bear break multiple days ago. We saw a bounce attempt. Let's zoom in here. A bounce attempt, a back test of that support, and a rejection from it, and then further downside. And, and this candlestick just closed. It's now 9.45 p.m. Eastern. This was an hour and 45 minutes ago this candlestick closed. So look at the ton, the ton of bear volume, the clear bear break of support. We broke 206. So 206 was our double low of support. Back here it was a support level. Let me move this line down to that 206 support that we bounced off of twice. And we broke it, obviously. So the break of 206 had us looking down, okay, where's the next support? And after 206, the next level that stands out is the low of the day back here on May 30th, 185. That was our next target, and we ended up bouncing perfectly off that level. And this bounce so far to this point is really reminiscent of that 206 bounce that we saw. And we bounced from 206... And in two days, we went to 323. I don't think we're going to see that kind of bounce, but we are going to see a bounce in my opinion. I'll point out why I believe momentum has shifted and why we are going to see the bulls show up in my opinion. So checking in on shorter term timeframes to the action going on today, we hit extreme oversold levels and we hit levels that we have not seen before. This was the hourly RSI more oversold on ETH than it has ever been. And well, maybe not ever, but at least since I've been watching in the past few months. So... We were looking to enter a trade here on this pullback, on this all-out dump, because the RSI was down under 20 on the hourly time frame. The four-hour RSI was just getting oversold, and obviously we've been playing this RSI pattern time and time again, both on the uptrend and on the downtrend. We're just more cautious on the downtrend, and we're quicker with the trades. So we were looking to get in here in the 220s. I personally got in in the mid-220s, and we even had a, a new member in the chat where they were saying, you know, maybe this RSI is not a good thing. Not a good indicator to be using. It looks like we could, could go down further. Ended up they were right. And I always welcome that just in terms of preventing groupthink. I always welcome contrary opinions. And I disagreed with their opinion. And I ended up being wrong. But my logic behind it was, okay, for two and a half, three months, we've been playing this pattern. And it has worked beautifully in both directions, both bullish and bearish. And I'm going to keep playing it. And then once it doesn't work, I will eat a loss. And then I will know that I have to shift my game plan. Well, I have not eaten a loss yet. I've been What I did on this play was entered bearish and then saw that the downside action was continuing. And then once we broke 220, I said, okay, this is something unusual. This is not the normal pattern that we see. And I'm in a bit of a hole now. So I'm going to have to work my way out of this by trading. And so we saw this original oversold bounce here. We shot back up to 228. I exited a quarter of my position on that initial bounce. Then I wanted to see further upside to try and and get back. I exited that at break even. Wanted to still get a little bit of profit, so I was a little bit greedy in that regard. But we did end up pulling back further. And on the way down, I sold it to 11 and rebought at 200, and just averaged down my my cost basis so that I would be able to uh, eke by. I'm in a situation where I'm looking to get out break even, where you know I'm missing out on a big time opportunity. But I would never have let it drop down to these levels because I never have in the past over the past three months and it's been working wonderfully. So I'm not too bummed about missing the opportunity. I am pretty pumped that I'm going to be able to get back break even because it's been a great month so far and looking to just keep that going. So I am still flipping here and I do believe momentum is shifted because we hit a volume climax. So here was the all out dump. We bounced right off of 185.39. That's that 185 daily support we were looking at. We saw huge volume, this hourly volume. You look back on the hourly chart no volume even comes close to this candlestick so volume climaxes often signal the top of an uptrend or the bottom of a downtrend here's a scenario where it signals the bottom of a downtrend in my opinion we saw a confirmation of this bullish reversal spinning top candlestick nice follow through and now we are looking at a, a bit of consolidation so i'll zoom into a bit more detail but what i do anticipate to happen now this was a key level for me 212 it was a base of support that we've we held for a while, and then once we saw that bear break, we back tested it and rejected from it. Let me zoom in to the 15 minute time frame so we can see this more clearly. I was watching this descending triangle pattern. We broke 212, we back tested and rejected from it, and then we got above it. That was very important to break 212 for me there because that shows me that the bulls are taking over control. On the four hour time frame, we're extremely oversold. We're coming off those oversold levels. Long lower wick. Not exactly a bullish reversal hammer, but that's just because the candle ran out of time. Volume was so huge. Hourly volume over 100,000 ETH traded. That is, what is that, $20 million roughly? 
I'm just doing that off the top of my head, but that's significant. So we're looking to see this oversold four-hour bounce. The RSI was under 20 on the four-hour time frame. We're now at about 26. This bounce is just getting started, in my opinion, and I'm looking for the same kind of catalyst that we saw back on the last bounce from uh, 206, and we shot straight up. It was a lot more powerful than what we're currently seeing, but keep in mind, we saw the oversold bounce. We saw a short-term bounce. We pulled back, formed the higher low, and then we took off. So I am going to be watching for a higher low to form here on the four-hour chart. I exited my position just now at 213. I'm looking to re-enter in the low 200s, and I'm using the 15-minute time frame for that. If I cannot get my low 200s, I will enter back in on a bullish break pretty much for what I exited at. So that's a decent scenario to be in where worst case scenario, I'm going to be buying back at about 213, which is what I sold at. But I am, I do have some bids placed right now in the low 200s, looking for this pullback, looking to have to establish that higher low and then looking for continuation to the upside. So the hourly chart, you can see we're coming right off the low here. We went from 185 to 216. That's a $31 bounce with no pullback. So now we're looking to establish a higher low on some consolidation. And then we need to see a bull break of 216.50 to prove that the bulls are in full control and we are going to see a trend change in the short term. So what I'm looking for here is a move to 230. I think that's a pretty conservative target. The last target I gave when we bounced off of 206, I said 36 hours looking for 280 and we ended up getting to the 320s. So I always like to give conservative targets just because under deliver over perform is the way to live life. That's the wrong way to the, that's the wrong phrase. Under promise over deliver. That's what I'm trying to say. So looking on the four hour chart. This is what I'm going to be using for gauging the bounce. Look at this downtrend resistance line. So this has been rejecting the price for a couple of weeks at this point. If we were to bounce from here, let's say it takes another few hours, we're going to be looking up hitting this level in the 230s. So that's why I have my target at 230 over the next 36 hours. That would be about nine candlesticks worth of time. And let's see if we can get up to that level. I'm not looking to change the trend here longer term. I'm looking to see the bears remain in control of this lower high, lower low downtrend for the time being, unless we see some really big volume follow through and confirmation. We're going to have to see a bounce on the four hour chart, a higher low, and then a higher high breaking this downtrend resistance line if the bulls want to see more than 230 on this bounce. And then from there, we're looking up at the last lower high. 253 would be the next level we look at if we can get over the 230s and this downtrend resistance line. So that's what I'm looking at on this daily time frame. Let's check that out. So we need a bullish reversal candlestick today. Again, this is just two hours into the trading day, so there's a long way to go. But we are looking for the four-hour bullish MACD cross. I know I'm jumping all over the place here in terms of time frames, but that's what you should be doing. Every time I'm checking in on any one of these charts, I'm looking at the five-minute, the 15-minute, the hourly, the four-hour, and the daily, all to get a complete picture before I do anything. That's that's my basic Every time I'm looking at the chart to get an update, I'm looking at all of those time frames to see how everything looks. So I'm watching the four-hour chart for this potential bullish MACD cross. That's what we got on the bounce off of 206 that really got things going off of that higher low. We saw that bullish MACD cross and a lot of follow-through. So I am going to be watching for all of these signals that we saw back in the 206 bounce because it is so similar in my opinion. But I am going to be cautious, well aware that the bears are in control of the overall daily downtrend. But this RSI on the four-hour time frame tells me that we have more bounce in this play. This bull move is not over yet, which is why I am looking to re-enter ideally in the low 200s, but might have to buy in if we make a bull break at 213, 214 before that happens. So that's Ethereum. Not going to go into as much detail in these other names because I'm not paying attention as much. I'm literally watching most of the ticks here on ETH and all the order book and all that action. But here on Bitcoin, we made a clear bear break of the higher low pattern on the daily time frame as soon as we broke 2472. That was a bear break. We saw a dump on big bear volume. And we also broke a support down here of 2430 when we pulled back and hit 2250. So that was actually... 2258 was the support and we bounced off of 2250. So we are still seeing a couple higher lows here. We do still have a, an uptrend in that regard, but you can see the momentum is starting to shift a little bit. And this is a potential bearish reversal head and shoulders pattern again that we need to be keeping a close eye on. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. The neckline, you could do it multiple ways. You could draw an uptrend line from the lower wicks. You could draw, you could use the the neckline on the right side would be this down lower wick down here all the way down at 2050. But either way, worth watching 
this bearish reversal potential pattern because we are shifting to start forming some lower highs and lower lows. And on the weekly time frame here for Bitcoin, things can look a little different as well, where we're seeing a clear choppy back, back and forth action. Lower wick of bulls buying the dip, upper wick of profit taking, bulls buying the dip, profit taking. And now depending on how this week ends, if we see the bulls buy the dip, we will have a nice lower wick yet again. But if we don't see that, that will be a change in the trend. So if we were to close here or lower by the end of this week, still a long way to go. But that would be a bit of a red flag that the weekly time frame can pull back further. And if we do break 2050, we could be looking at a pullback all the way down to 1600 or something along those lines. So keep in mind that where we're coming from, this uptrend is going to remain in intact no matter what for a long time. We could pull back all the way to 1200 and still be in an uptrend on this weekly time frame, looking at the higher lows of consolidation that had been established before this monster breakout. So keep that in mind and need to be cautious of that as well, knowing that we could pull back, you know, 50% from where we currently stand, maybe 25%, 30%, whatever it's going to be, might have to, if you're long, you might have to sit through a bunch of red for a long time. And if you remember these videos, if you've been watching these videos, I've been talking about the long drawn out consolidation that's going to take weeks. I've been talking about this for a long time because this is an unsustainable move. We know long drawn out consolidation is coming. And I was talking about how the space is going to get boring. Well, it's not going to get boring if we keep seeing these all out dumps and bounce opportunities. But the consolidation is prolonged in my opinion. And let's look at Ethereum weekly time frame real quick. This consolidation might play out another couple of weeks. Although in my opinion, Ethereum's consolidation is going to come to an end sooner than Bitcoin potentially. Although the correlation between them, they'll likely be near each other in terms of when it comes to an end. But we are fairly close to consolidating, done consolidation on the weekly time frame for Ethereum in my opinion. And it might last another week. I'll have to see how this bounce off of 185 goes. But I don't think we're going to drop down below 150 on this move. Just looking at where we're coming from and how much we would give back. I do think this weekly time frame is going to see a bounce back up towards the upper $200 range and set a lower high and then see the range tighten up a little bit. This is pretty significant consolidation that has occurred up to this point on the weekly. So back to Bitcoin. I'm sorry for jumping around there. So where we stand on Bitcoin, on the hourly time frame, oversold bounds very similar to Ethereum, volume climax, bullish reversal doji, confirmation of that doji, but we're still setting lower highs. So this is why on the hourly time frame, we have to consolidate, form a higher low, and then a higher high to change the trend. We're not just going to come right off the low and change this trend. We would have to see a break of 2430 to do that and that's not going to happen from these levels in my opinion so we have to pull we have to see a bounce set a lower high pull back set a higher low and then see a higher high to get that bull momentum and follow through breaking the lower high pattern four hour time frame same thing not a bullish reversal candlestick we ran out of time but a long lower wick of bulls buying the dip trying to see some follow through the rsi is coming off of oversold and we'll be keeping an eye out for a bullish MACD cross, but we have a lot of work to do here. And I do believe that the bears are going to remain in control of the longer term trends on both Bitcoin and Ethereum. Keep that in mind. This is not a bottom in my opinion. It's a temporary bottom with a really nice bounce opportunity. But in order to change this trend, I mean, just look at this. Let's look at the daily time frame for Bitcoin. What would be needed in order to change the daily trend? Well, we would have to break this high of 2636. So we're not going to see $250 from this move. It's going to be long and drawn out if that were to happen with higher lows and higher highs along the way. So that's the key to any trend change. We have to break the lower high pattern. And in order to break the lower high pattern, you have to set a higher low and consolidate on the way up. So that's what we're looking at for Bitcoin. Let's see. Let's get a target for Bitcoin. Gave a target for Ethereum in the same time frame, 36 hours. Where do I think we can bounce to? I'm going to be looking up at upper 2400s. I think we can get up to, I'm looking at this previous support line now, resistance at 2470, 2472. So I do believe we can make it up to those levels over the next 36 hours if this bounce and momentum follows through. And again, the hourly time frame is going to have to consolidate before then, form our higher low and our higher high to reverse this trend. Litecoin is the strongest name on the daily time frame by far. Look at that trend. That's a beautiful uptrend. And even in these dumps, holding up just dandy. So we can draw some uptrend support lines to be watching here. Want to make sure no candlesticks close below. So that's an uptrend support line. We bounced off of it on the daily. Higher lows are being maintained. 
and we're not anywhere near as oversold on some of these time frames. Let's look at the four hour time frame. RSI never hit oversold. Bulls buying the dip, nice long lower wick. Hourly time frame. Volume climax, bullish reversal doji. Clear little downtrend resistance that has to break. Let's look at this on the 15 minute time frame. I assume that's where I drew that from. And that's the resistance. So very key. 15 minute resistance here we're consolidating this looks like a bull flag on the 15 minute time frame for ethereum or excuse me litecoin so normal healthy consolidation what stands out to me volume on the way up very strong green volume it was declining the bulls were running out of steam but very low volume consolidation on this potential bull flag if we see a bull break of 45.95 we're looking up at 46.68 and then looking to break these lower highs let's get the same scenario for litecoin what would we be looking for in terms of a bounce let's say if this bounce plays out i'm looking for a move back up towards 50 dollars in the next 36 hours if the bulls have the kind of momentum that they had on the last bounce when ethereum bounced from 206 i would be looking for a move up here to 50 dollars. i usually don't like giving targets like this because things change so often and so drastically always want to be monitoring and we have our targets for our trades but we can adjust them depending on what we're seeing and the clues that we're getting on the shorter term time frames so ethereum or why like litecoin why i didn't play litecoin was because we were not as oversold now that being said it is also the most bullish chart so maybe that was a bad decision in the sense that the bulls are the strongest on litecoin and they're holding up the best so maybe that would have been a better play we'll have to see once the dust settles what the gains were from the bottom comparatively but ethereum was just so darn oversold hard to pass up that opportunity and we've already bounced 25 dollars off the low so those are big gains to be had not for me just breaking even here but a lot of people were buying in you know in the 190s and in the chat room they were making some decent gains there and people that were stuck holding knowing that we're that oversold there is no way that i was ever going to sell ethereum with the rsi on the four hour time frame down under 20 and the only thing that i would be doing is again you know exiting at 211 buying back in at 202 and doing things like that to average down my cost basis because i'm going to i'm going to be in for that oversold bounce there is no way i'm selling my shares and sitting on the sidelines with a four hour rsi under 20. I'm only going to be positioning myself better for the oversold bounce when it does occur. So the oversold bounce is underway, and now we're going to be watching overnight. Can the hourly time frames form higher lows and higher highs? So all coins are getting crushed as well with this Ethereum pullback. Gollum has been absolutely crushed. The big red flag for Gollum was breaking this low here at 16.5. The long lower wicks bouncing off of 16.5 breaking led to lower lows, and that's really when momentum picked up to the downside, and we very quickly lost... 60 percent 50 percent from those levels so this is a very significant pullback i scaled out some of my position in Gollum back in the uh, 20s up here on this bounce and then i averaged down in the 18s i am in the red on that average down but i'm looking long i'm looking all of 2017 that's my uh, position where i took in about 15 percent of total profits in the cryptocurrency space and then after averaging down and scaling out a little bit probably down to you know 10 percent at this point so i'm fine just letting that ride for the next six months looking at a fundamental play for Gollum, looking at the potential addition to to coinbase in q4 looking for the release of brass all those things so i'm perfectly fine with where that stands and really it's a, almost an investment in bitcoin as well just because if you're trading on an exchange where you know you have to cash out and the price is tied to the the price of bitcoin i'm fine with that as well and that can be you know my investment play because i normally don't go long in things but i'm looking to go long in Gollum for at least the rest of 2017 and then we'll take it from there so where i stand on ethereum i am going to continue playing this bounce because i do believe there is power and volume behind it if that changes i will absolutely quickly cut the cord and go back to the sideline and patiently wait for things to settle down a little bit but i am still looking for again just to go over it again on the hourly time frame actually the 15 minute i want to see a pullback down towards the low 200s so he can fill my bids that'd be sweet and then looking for the bulls to show back up and break the recent high of 216.50 and on the hourly time frame what that would look like is inside bars we'll see which direction we break these inside bars a new one just formed and you can see the range is tightening utilize these inside bars watch the range of the previous candlestick and watch for the break so if we see a break here of 213.76 that's a bull break and if we see a break of 206.34 that's a bear break and that would mean that my my bids are going to get filled if we do break 206.34 so my position right now 
exit having exited at 213 i'm just patiently waiting and if we fill my bids that's great and if not i will cancel my bids and rebuy on the break here of 213.76 and i will lose 76 cents which i'm perfectly fine with to give myself the opportunity to rebuy in you know seven eight dollars cheaper take that much off the table reinvest those profits and try and continue to play this oversold bounce so I apologize if that was all over the place a little bit longer than normal with a lot of action going on. And I will check back in in the near term future. I'll likely do my best to check in tomorrow. I do got some things to do after hours, but I will do my best to check back in to see how this oversold bounce is going. And from here, the RSI has cooled off significantly enough on the shorter term time frames that we need to be cautious again, right? We don't have the oversold RSI as not an excuse, but as a, a safety blanket where we can say, well, at least the RSI is extremely oversold. We know an oversold bounce is coming here in the short term. It is the case for the four-hour chart that we know a longer-term oversold bounce still has to play out. But in terms of the hourly time frame, we have seen the hourly RSI get back up over 30. So we need to be cautious again just because who knows you know, what the big boys want. They are in control of this game. And, and going back to that 40 bot, the 40 buying bot, there was a long period of time when we were trading in the low 200s where that was the only bull volume coming in was these consistent 31 second every 31 seconds 40 buys coming in and there was a, a complete lack of volume so when there's a lack of volume it allows these big whales these big players to really manipulate things they can do whatever they want when there is no volume because they can just be playing with themselves in terms of you know putting bids and putting asks and fake asks and big walls and driving the price down and so they're making money on the way down but i do believe that the power of the momentum showed me that we saw shorts covering and we even saw a bit of a short squeeze with the magnitude we bounced from 185 back to 210 i do believe that there was some attempts to get some short squeezed and to get that really strong bounce in a really quick way and I do believe that all of that volume, all of the action that went on tells me that the whales are now long. And the question is going to be, how long is that going to play out? And again, that's a little bit of a speculation trying to you know, determine what big money is doing. But it's the volume that's the main indicator that's having me say that. So I appreciate you watching. I'll check back in tomorrow. Have a great night.